I'm a 27 year old mother of a beautiful two year old daughter. I'm the CEO of two companies, one being Don't Eat That, my health company. And I'm the creator of The Lion Diet. Okay, so at worst, Michaela Peterson is deliberately just flat out lying to everyone, and at best, she's being dishonest. I've successfully treated myself for, for multiple chronic severe idiopathic disorders. I've been unmedicated since drastic dietary intervention in 2015, and I'm completely symptom free. Uh, it makes me wonder, what else are you lying about, Michaela? At the end of the day, all we have to go on is your word, your own anecdotal testimony, and you haven't provided us with any scientific evidence that, you know, your carnivore diet, your lion diet has any efficacy in uh, treating or curing autoimmune disorders or neuropsychiatric issues like anxiety or depression. So if all we have to go on is your word and you've literally admitted to lying, why should we trust you? And you do have to recognize that Michaela is trying to make money off of all of you with this ridiculous carnivore or lion diet thing. She has a financial incentive to lie to all of you, and I'm sure she's smart enough to recognize that it sounds a lot more enticing to say, Hey guys, you know, I've suffered from all of these really serious issues my entire life, but as soon as I went on the lion diet, cured, all gone, I'm on no medications anymore. Uh, rather than saying the truth that, you know, after switching to the carnivore diet, I still have all of these problems, they've only gotten better, but I still need to take medications to try and uh, manage these problems I have. So uh, the truth doesn't sell as well as lies, and I think uh, that could explain why Michaela's lying. Then when I was 21, my skin started to break down. Break down. I was dying. I'm not anymore. I'm thriving. And this is me now. This is me on the lion diet. The lion diet is strict and it'll fix your problems and turn you into a boss human. So notice how, again, she didn't provide any scientific evidence for her claims. She didn't even provide evidence that this diet benefited her in any meaningful way. She didn't provide uh, her own medical report stating that she's been in remission of these autoimmune disorders or neuropsychiatric disorders she's been suffering from. No, all she showed was a flattering photo of her wearing underwear. So we are to believe that this lion diet can treat or even cure serious autoimmune and neuropsychiatric disorders like anxiety anxiety and depression because you look good in underwear. And we already know that you have lied about uh, treating your neuropsychiatric disorders and being off all medications. So why should anyone take you seriously? I've seen thousands of people recover using this diet. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Well, there's an old saying, Michaela, if it sounds too good to be true, then you're probably full of shit. It involves only eating ruminant animal meat. Organs are fine high fatty cuts, like ribeye or ribs, salt and water. It's as simple as ruminant meat, salt and water. It's also important to note that these two videos are only a few days apart from each other. So when she made this lion diet video, she knew full well that her dad was on medications to deal with his mood disorder and that he was having a hell of a hard time getting off of his medications and he needed rehab. So she deliberately lied, claiming that she cured her father's mood disorders even though he was still on medications and he was trying to get off of medications just so she could promote her stupid diet and make a quick buck off of you. And what's also funny is, in this lion diet video, she didn't mention her mother. Why would that be? She only mentioned her father. Uh, you know, these people are, they think that they have like this secret that the entire scientific field doesn't have. And so for Bart K saying like, hey, you have to throw it all out. And it's, it's, no, it's, it's like you need to look in the mirror and realize that you're the one that actually has no idea what he's talking about. Which is, how is that possible if he was a senior science? I mean, it doesn't make any sense unless these are just chills. They are just, it has to be. Because you can't be a senior scientist and say that, oh, the literally the entire peer review, peer review process itself is, you know, and instead then appeal to anecdotes. He's like, oh, we've got all these anecdotes so this is what's most important. It's, it's insane. It's, it's literally insanity to think that the least amount of evidence is somehow now the best evidence and you can't acknowledge the best evidence because this weaker form of evidence is somehow all that matters. And it's ridiculous.
opinion based on what I have seen and my understanding of physiology, which is significant. A professional opinion based on my very, very significant understanding of the physiology and the science. I don't need because evidence. Of course, of course, course you do. Of course you do. Of if course. I am a competent scientist, which I am, that qualifies me to profess in my areas of expertise mm. about the acceptability and veracity of the scientific inference such that it exists in my area. I am now right. entitled to my opinion as a highly right. trained, mm. very successful, former senior academic with a very, mm. very impressive CV because it clearly says in and of its own disclosure statement, none of what's in here tells us anything about nothing. That's the first truthful statement I've heard coming out of academia regarding nutritional science pretty much ever. The research on meat or on plant-based diets or on any form of mm -hmm. nutritional science, mm -hmm. all of it has its flaws. There's no Correct. such thing as a scientific study that is perfect. The evidence that would be required Mm. to support the assertions that are flying around there from both sides is not there. Nobody has any evidence. Fantastic. That includes me. So, yes, sir. Yes, there is. Absolutely. Okay, show, show me the evidence then. Show well, me the evidence. How, do you explain, how do you explain the correlation? Where's your evidence then to support the fact that withdrawing plants from anybody's diet will make them better of any inflammatory condition why right if you were let's say a general practitioner or a cardiologist or a cancer specialist and you had a patient sitting in front of you with a whole series of health concerns if you had no science whatsoever which most of those individuals don't well fair. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Assuming that this specialist has knowledge of the of the data, in which case they would quit being a physician. Well, or, yeah. well then, well then you get into a, a a situation where no one can be treated. Nobody on either side of this argument has anything right, right, remotely. Right. So, I mean, don't don't pin it on me and say you have no evidence. Okay, I don't need any evidence. There is clear inference that a diet that is lacking in whole protein and fat soluble uh, bioavailable minerals and vitamins of the kind you find in animal products, if you keep those things out of your diet, if you don't supplement those things effectively, you will run into a problem sooner or later. There is clear, clear evidence of that. Based on what? Oh so God. you've got evidence. Well, the doctor hasn't done any research at all in terms you've of the got ev Where's your evidence? evidence? Where is your evidence? Ah, oh, you're Where a stuck record, Michelle. Where you really you are absolutely Where mired in your own shit, aren't you? You're evidence. up to your neck in your own excrement. <laughs> you, can't, you can't see the forest for the trees. You think the inflammation is coming from plants, from oxalates and so on and so forth, but yet there's no evidence to support that. Equally, you've said before, there is no evidence that to support a meat-based diet, except anecdotal. You need to be very clear so about where, are we? where are we? Then? We need to be where clear. Are we <laughs> well, show me the evidence. Well, I am perfectly, perfectly entitled to come online and say, look, here's where the science falls short, and that's what I do. Here's yeah. why. Idiots like such and such shouldn't be coming online and saying this, that, and the other thing. Here's the exact reasons why. And mm. if you actually bother to watch, watch any of my videos, Michelle, you'll see that I go, I get very detailed, very clear explanations of exactly where the errors are being made in terms of the interpretation mm. of the actual inference, mm. the actual stats, the numbers, the data that was collected by these people in these studies. You know, mm. as the great leader, right, remember that you're the great leader of the of you know of nutrition as a watchdog mm -hmm. right 
how can you possibly begin to say that the people with the lowest cholesterol levels are the people least likely to die? Yep. We've thrown out nutrition science. We are yep. left yep. with what we can glean from right. your, your knowledge. Right. So show me the evidence that you base that knowledge upon. Show okay. me the evidence. You know, once there is sufficient anecdotal stuff that we can start doing the the science, then there will be some evidence to say, well, look, here is an inference. Great. There's plenty of anecdote that people can go to on either side of the argument if they want to. And I say all power to them. If you're collecting anecdotal evidence, like the likes that Sean Baker does, on meatheels.com then i'm sorry if you're trying to say that that is publishable evidence i i, well, I don't we'll know see, what to we'll tell see. you you haven't shown anybody anybody any convincing evidence whatsoever I'm just not even investigated the fitted stinking c from chorley a complete f moron okay, i'm not fucking stupid believe it or not what fucking evidence do I need, you syphilis? I haven't made any fucking claims, you lying motherfuckers, cockwombles. So what we have here is a mad, rabid, fat, unwell, mentally deranged, a deranged, mentally deficient, self-poisoning veg. You s ridiculous, desperate, fat, ugly, syphilis. She got absolutely f***ing creamed. Incoherent, random words and sentences that had no f***ing meaning of any kind. And then I'd go, poo, shit. I basically punched her bloody. I beat her senseless. Just go and watch the f***ing thing. That's the end of that. That 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 in those clips and which person put forth the more compelling case that their opinion their professional opinion is the more valuable and the diet that they have an opinion on is likely going to produce the better health outcome so i'll let you make your mind up there and i'll see you in the next video so um, stay tuned for the next part. We'll pick up right here where we left off. It what you can watch it. I will leave any intros and stuff out so that you can watch it in a consecutive style. And so again, my name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at patreon.com slash lifting the veil. And um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned, make sure to subscribe. Please help me um, reach more people by sharing these videos around on the internet because I rely solely on word of mouth and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore my channel has literally been completely restricted so i rely on your help and i need your help so please help support this channel by sharing my work around if you appreciate it and uh make sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber already and leave me your comments i definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff and i will see you in the next video y'all stay safe and take care of yourselves and i will see you later